welcome to all of you on my channel maths with munir i hope that you all are doing great and watching my videos in my previous video we have learned about functions why what are functions and why we are using them and we have also learned about its feature like even function and odd function and we have also discussed about its domain and range so what we are going to do now we are going to carry on with that topic and today we will learn about how to find out inverse of a function and we will also discuss about composition of function so let's begin with first about inverse of a function let's assume that over here we have a function f of x in order to find out the inverse of a function obviously you need to have a function f of x so let's assume that we have a function f of x which is as 3x cube plus 7 and we want to find out about its about its inverse okay so there are four steps so let's go one by one f of x is 3x cube plus 7 the first step is to put f of x equals to y so i am writing 1 over here so that you will get to know easily this is your first step put f of x equals to y y is equals to 3x cube plus 7 and now from here on your second step will start what will be the second step the second over here now you can see that y is a function of x you need to write you need to find out the value of x from here so we know that 7 is having an addition sign over here once you move the 7 from this side of the equation to the other side it would become minus so basically what we are going to do now we are solving it for x now all right now 3 is also multiplying with x cube so once you shift it from this side to the other side it will be in denominator equals to x cube okay so in order to get the value of x we need to do something opposite so that we can get rid of this cube so what we are going to do now we will take the cube root on both side you know in mathematics is always about maintaining maintaining the balance whatever you are doing on one side of the equation you have to do it on the other side as well it's not like that you, you you can do one thing on one side of the equation and you are leaving the second time second side what you have to do you have to maintain the balance that is why we always have the equal sign okay so we are going to take the cube root on both side it will become y minus 7 over 3 into 1 over 3 equals to x okay so this is it, we are done with the with the second step now how about the third step if you look at the your first step carefully you will realize that f of x was equals to y so how to get the value of x from this step it will always be changed so that's how you will replace x with f inverse of y so we will write f inverse y equals to y minus 7 over 3 over 1 over 3 okay so this is your third step all right since our purpose was to find out f inverse of x so we can see clearly that we got f inverse but we still haven't got uh, x over here so now replace y with x so you will this will be your fourth step and then you will end up with this solution f inverse of x have become x minus 7 over 3 over 1 over 3 so that has become your solution and we can say that f inverse of x is like this so i hope that the inverse of a function you are very very clear about it now how about the composition of a function so uh, composition of a function is basically like this let's suppose that you have two functions f of x and g of x so once you substitute one function into other into another function or this function into this function it would become the composition so by substituting one function into another function is basically called the composition of a function 
So there are different ways and there are different notations in order to write the composition of a function. We will discuss about that as well. So you should have your copy and pen with you and I am sure that you are noting down all these steps so that you every, uh, every time wherever you are struggling you can look back at, at them and you can clear yourself. So uh, how about composition of a function? Okay, composition. of composition of functions okay let's assume that we have two functions f of x as uh, 2x plus 3 and we can take another function g of x as 1 over x now over here there is one thing that i would really like to highlight uh, on which we often neglect while teaching and student obviously never cares about it. So what is that? We know that over here the function g of x that we have is actually over here we have a simple polynomial but over here we have a rational. So rational fraction. So it's 1 over x. So x is in the denominator part and we know that x should not be equal to 0. Why? Because if we have 1 over 0, 1 over 0 will become the undefined form. So, wherever we have a function like this, there, there will always be a condition that x should not be equal to 0. So, that is basically the purpose of the uh, condition. So, I would suggest all of you and encourage you wherever you are having a question and condition like that, please think about it that why we are having such condition. So, there must be a hidden, um, a hidden, hidden knowledge which we really need to get about it. Okay, so we have f of x and g of x. Okay, first let's discuss first about the composition of a function and how we can uh, write it in different notation. So, composition of a function f of g of x, this is one way and it can also be written as f of g of x. What does it mean by in f of x, think like that this all as x. So, in f of x, we will replace x with g of x or you can also write it as f g x this all these all three have the same meaning so don't be confused about it and don't worry about it this all three have the same meaning so let's find out first about f of g of x okay f of x we have 2x plus 3 and we want to find f of g of x. So, what we will do? We will replace this x with g of x. 2 instead of writing x, now we will write 1 over x because we are using the composition and we are replacing it. So, simplify it, it will become 2 over x plus 3. Okay, we know that we can simplify this step. So, we will go for it and we will take the LCM and it will become 2 plus 3x over x. So, that is your f of g of x. So, how about how about g of f of x and do you think that f of g of x is going to be g of f of x? So, let us find out and let us wait and let us see what we are going to get. Okay, now g of f of x okay we have 1 over x now in this x we will replace it with f of x so it will become 2x plus 3 so there is nothing more that you need to simplify so we will say that this is our composition of g of f of x and it's our answer so if, if you if you try to compare both this answer this one and this one you can clearly see that you, and you will feel the difference that they are not equal. So, we will say that f of g of x is not equal to g of f of x or in other words, you can say that the composition of function is never commutative. 
so why it is like that so let let me give you a quick real life of example so that's why you can that is how you will be able to understand that why the composition is not commutative uh, uh, let's think that we have a, an industrial plant that produces uh, the mango juice bottle okay so the first operation is to fill the bottle with juice that is your first operation and the second is to uh, to put a cap on it okay that is your one way that is your one composition or uh, how about if they put a cap first would they be able to put juice in that bottle no so you see that if so composition of function is exactly like this so it is never commutative so i hope to i hope that you all have got this video and please subscribe and share this video as much as you can so that you, your friends can also get benefits